Hi, everyone, and welcome to a conversation with the artists from Return. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Laura, and I'm the executive director here at Awakenings, and it's been an honor to work with these four incredible artists for a second time. As we get started this evening, we will begin with a land acknowledgement from Awakenings creative director, Jerry Fredrickson. Good evening, everyone. Awakening sits on the stolen land of the Sioux, Miami, Potawatomi, Kickapoo and Peoria tribes. And as settlers of this unseceded territory, we as an organization want to name and respect its original inhabitants. We cannot continue our work to dismantle sexual violence as a weapon, a weapon of systematic oppression without acknowledging the colonialism we have inherited. I hope everyone has had a chance to view Return on our website. I'll be briefly introducing the artists, but there's so much more information on the virtual exhibit. So please check there for more ways to support the artists and to support Awakenings. First, we welcome a familiar and beautiful face. Please welcome Taylor Dalton, who is a mixed queer performance and visual artist. She has been volunteering with Awakenings since 2015 and has been on our art committee for two years. Taylor also photographed this exhibit and previous exhibits, I believe, um, which was an integral part of bringing the exhibit to life online. Welcome, my dear friend, Taylor. Next, we welcome our first artist, Isabella Scott. Isabella works in a range of mediums. She continues to explore the theme of healing in return through three acrylic paintings titled Recapturing Freedom. Welcome, Isabella. And we welcome Alex Brightville. Alex creates collages, paintings, and printmaking. Her inspirations are based on her childhood experiences, animals, and social justice. Next, we welcome Veronica Ravichandran. Veronica is a mixed media composite artist. She draws inspiration from her own life experience and in the country she lives like Australia, Israel, Canada, New Zealand, Denmark, and the United States. And our final artist, welcome to Anesha Hogan. She uses photography, video, traditional media, and soft sculpture to create multi-layered works that are not bound by any medium. Welcome to all and thank you for being here tonight. Taylor, take it away. Hello everyone, it's so good to be here. Uh, thank you so much to everyone attending. Thank you so much, Isabella, Alex, Veronica, and Anisha, so much for being here. Um, we're gonna dive right in. So um, I did have, as Laura mentioned, the privilege and the honor to see all of this work in person in the gallery. It is stunning um, as always. And uh, I'm really glad that we're able to bring this conversation to all of you to just dive in. Hopefully you've all seen the, um, the work and the exhibit online. Um, and so we're gonna be kind of seeing what the um, artists have to share with us um, outside of the, the already incredible pieces that they've made. Um, so I kind of, uh, in walking through the gallery and having that, um, that experience, I organized my thoughts in, into three kind of sections here, color, texture, and process, just because we have a myriad of representations of art, style, um, of different processes. And I wanted to kind of give a, uh, a platform in order to hear from um, all of these wonderful artists, uh, just the chance to share. Um, so let's talk about color first. Um, I absolutely could not help but notice um, just the vibrancy in this grouping of work throughout the gallery of all four artists. Um, so, and feel free to just jump in here, you four. Um, I just love to hear about your use of color in these works, how maybe they differ from other work that you've done, maybe this in particular. I know many of you have, um, have worked with us before here at Awakenings. Um, how does color inform the, the message that you're conveying? How are color specific to the pieces that you're making? Anyone want to jump in here and, and just talk about color? I could start. Um, I've done, so I have a lot of uh, work with different uh, color themes through like kind of my practice. Um, the first piece uh, I made in uh, 2000 and uh, it's been it started in 2017 and it's like I, I continue it through the years um, it's a little more like pastel I was thinking about like uh, baby colors like colors that people use to decorate babies rooms and like mm -hmm. um, ge the ways that colors are gendered mm -hmm. uh, or assi assigned to different genders and then I started kind of moving through thinking about uh, the ways that color theory is like racialized or uh, even in uh, things that are unrelated in art or in whatever. Um, and then I uh, kind of 
so that's when I started working with like uh, kind of like uh, juxtaposing like neutral and really dark colors. So yes. The two uh, bone and skin graft uh, pieces. And then the most recent one, um, I kind of just uh, use I'm still I'm still working with some of those ideas I'm, I'm combining them into one piece and instead of having these separate parts <laughs> for sure the juxtaposition I would say uh specifically coming to mind the skin grafts and bone is is something that it, even on the like the white walls of the gallery just like jumps out or it, it you have to kind of search in one of them the yeah for for where it, it kind of jumps out because of the lack of color the pastel work that you're that you're mentioning so yeah thank you so much for sharing yeah okay um i love colors and for me uh, my journey is uh, about healing and i've been um it's, it's been a very long time for me that i got to where i am so for me i i like to portray all my art with lots of color showing um you know that i'm healed that uh, i have hope you know and i look forward to uh um the present then going back to look at my past but in my recent painting the first one with the girl with black and white roses my world loss um and then mm. putting next to the the here comes the sun was uh, you know to show the difference of the past and present because the black and white flowers, uh, roses are like, um, I my world is lost. You know, mm -hmm. what has happened to me? My colors have drained and there's, you know, I, I'm just so destroyed. So then, then goes the moment of, you know, the journey of healing, then comes here comes the sun. Mm -hmm. Everything is different now that I've gone through this long journey and, and I've come out, you know, uh, watching the sun come out with flowers you know colorful flowers instead of those black and white flowers where that was my past yeah absolutely and side by side the, the yeah side seeing, by side seeing them and even as you're describing them i'm like oh my god of course like we we have these outlined beautiful because you're using watercolor and pen in that first and then you have the washi paper which is like it just holds that color and how, right. how beautiful it is side by side with that sweet face in the middle and how that is the journey that, that you're conveying to us. It's so clear. Go For my on. pieces, um, so I did um, a series of collages. So I have the collages in the, in the exhibit and then I have a version which is print, a print version, a line of cut and wood cut. So in the collages, the, the colors are very earthy they're very, um, there's a lot of uh, greenery in it and, and a lot of connected to the earth. So for the versions that I did, um, I did colors that I wanted to, to portray sort of like a dreamlike, like you're holding a veil and looking through, looking at these women, looking at these like monstrosity, beautiful women. Mm -hmm. And um, just wanted to highlight some of those, um, some of those spots that like, for example, I highlighted the mouth with red color and, you know, where the version in the in the collage, it was more like a uniform color. But in this case, I really wanted to focus on, on one symbol. Yeah, very cool. I mean, this, these, uh, the series, and you have three, again, I hope everyone was able to, to take a look at these um, on the Awakening site, um, where you have them in pairs, where it's the postcard, and then the uh, the line of cut sheen collé and the wood cut that you you have paired it with, and just even the difference in the depth of color, the fact that you are clearly using two different mediums here, um, kind of circulating around this same image. But yeah, exactly like you're saying, this earthy tone, and then making certain via like the choices as an artist that you're making, making certain part of of parts of the piece pop like the lips the tongue I remember very vividly um so that's that's so cool thank you for sharing Isabella what about you um my pieces are pretty bright um I just use, yeah they're really like bold and fun I used like basically just the primary colors the primary colors are my like favorite and my pieces were more about um I think having different feelings, but being in the same spot, if that makes sense. And I just felt like each primary color kind of gives off a completely different mood. Like blue feels different than yellow and feels different than red. So I thought it'd be a really neat way to create some like 
to create something different in a piece or different moods within the piece. Yeah, absolutely. And yours, I mean, again, being in the gallery, yours is the first right there, kind of on the, the right-hand side of the entrance. So seeing these large uh, three pieces together, very, very much saturated in the primaries um, was so kind of um, arresting in a way because they are so bright. Um, they are just the three colors that we, that are the foundation of all the other colors, <laughs> just the fact that we're looking at that and then able to, um, to really kind of step forward and see the, the subtleties of exactly what you're saying. The fact that um, one color, even though it's a similar image that's being portrayed, a similar, the posture um, is, is very kind of similar between the three. There are three distinct feelings. And I mean, this it directly lends me into this next um, thought about texture and how I love that all of these pieces that you four have made um, use, use texture in such specific ways, um, but they all have so much texture to them. So I'm thinking specifically um, of the nails in the, the middle piece of Recapturing Freedom of yours, Isabella, of the, um, the Sheen Cole. Um, and if you want to, Alex, dive into what Sheen Cole, what the process of Sheen Cole is, I would love to know because it is so, um, it's just so stunning what you've done uh, from the postcard to the, uh, the line of cut and the wood cut. Um, I think of the, uh, the textures, again, Veronica, in the washi paper, um, and here comes the sun. Um, Anisha, the mixed media, you are using so many different things. I think it was just now I was on the website and I was like, that was salt in the frame. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> um, so I would love to just kind of open up what, um, what the juxtaposition of texture does for you, um, does for you all as artists um, and opening up different ways to, to express yourself. Um, for me, I really wanted, I felt like if I hadn't, any, hadn't added any texture, it would have just been kind of flat. And I feel like it really creates like a grounding center of the tree. So you know exactly where the middle is supposed to be. And it kind of puts in perspective the overall like feeling I wanted to give the piece of just being like stuck in the same spot. So I thought it really so solidified that. Very cool. Very cool. It is very kind of arresting though to see the three. Again, we're going back to color, the primary colors, the vibrancy of those three. And then stepping forward, being like, oh, at her top is they're all nails. I hope everyone was able to see this. All um, nails and thread, correct? That's between like a type of string that's kind of keeping this image together, but we're seeing um, just the depth of, of a message there that you're, that you're conveying. Uh, yeah, for me, I love learning all kinds of uh, method, especially, uh, you know, giving texture to paintings. Mm. And uh, this was a, a very uh, special uh, technique that is used in Japan. And my trip there was to look for those papers and, cool. uh, and then to, to get them. And the reason why I wanted here comes the sun to have texture, it's like you're building onto your life, mm. you know? Like while the other one is like, like you kind of give up, like you're broken. Well, well, here comes the sun, you're building, you know, then in the texture shows that yeah, you're building and you can see the lines and your life is no more just blend. It's, 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 it's movement, it's movement, it's uh, building up, you know, it's the colors, the sun, it's a lot more than the other painting. Yes. And that's, that's what I was trying to. Yeah, and it's so much more. I love this. Uh, I love that you keep using the phrase building up, that, that it's so saturated, the, the flowers in Here Comes the Sun, that I'm like, oh, I don't even know if there's anything, the like layers to this. There could be so much more underneath and this idea of like building up as, as we go through life, we go through the journeys, the experiences that we have, and they're all layered on top of each other. And, and we hope the, the way that you're portraying right. Piece is, is such such a vibrant and bright yeah. kind of it's wow. it's about recovering too you know well, yes. I'd like to concentrate on recovering um, yeah. sometimes remembering the past is really difficult you know forgiving the person who did it to you it's difficult so I would tend to try to look forward rather than backward and I try to build my life that way 
you know, and Absolutely. through art, you know, that gives me a lot of joy. Yes, the joy comes through for sure. And to follow you? up what the, the beautiful uh, conversation that uh, Veronica just started, um, it's, you know, I, I was thinking about my healing, you know, working mm -hmm. with different tools and why, you know, asking myself, why am I working with collage? Why am I working with pre-making? Well, for me, it's an empowering uh, process, right? So collaging is cutting things, it's putting together different ideas, different things that I'm thinking. Um, and then for pre-making, using um, the, the shinkole, which is a technique in which you, you uh, transfer the thin Japanese papers, mm. and then you bond it into thicker paper once you run it to the press. Wow. So for me, that was just an amazing technique to use because it's about layering. Yes, like she mentioned, um, layering and just building that communication, right? With, with, the, with the art piece and with you know, the audience. Yeah, absolutely. And thinking about, I mean, both of you, thank you so much for sharing this, this idea of layering and also the labor in uh, the art that you're making in the, the work and the process and whatever you're choosing to use the different materials that you're choosing to use the the labor that goes into it and and being so specific about that being very, um, very intentional, just like we're intentional about our healing. Just like we're very specific about our field, we need to be, we have to focus on that and how, how beautiful that is. I love that. Anesha, you wanna jump in? Yeah, um, I'm really interested in like the sense of touch. I love like interactive artworks um, and in most galleries, they can't be interactive, but I still like to um, remind people of those, uh, those tactile like feelings. Um, and I think I also like um, kind of going off of what Veronica and Alex were saying, I, uh, my piece, um, Take Care of Yourself was originally meant to be interacted with and it's like a body mm -hmm. pillow. It's meant to be like held so you can feel the weight of the body. Um, and I just, yeah, I think it is an important part in kind of healing, like having these, uh, these layers of um, kind of like experience. I think that uh, like kind of like a therapeutic art making process is really like uh, experiential and needs to be kind of like uh, felt in a way different than just separate than just like viewing. Sure, like the kinetic nature of, of yeah. Viewing. yeah, yeah. And of working and of being an artist and of creating something. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. That makes me think, I mean, how wonderful it would be to, to engage with this art, to be all together. We of course hope we could after saying that like, to hold that pillow of take care of yourself. I'm like, I wish we could all go around and pass it around and just engage with art the way we, the way we miss engaging with art and how special it is that um, that, that piece is there. Talk to me about, um, and anyone can jump in here because this kind of just popped uh, into my head as far as, um, textures that you're working with with these pieces specifically do you find yourself using these specific mediums and these um, and these kind of tools to to make your art or do you find yourself navigating as you live and as you create do you find yourself looking for more and more ways and different um, different medium to to express yourself um, for me, I, I, I don't know. I've always just really loved painting and I think I kind of forgot that for a while because I did kind of go out and try to find and do a bunch of different mediums and try to do different things. But I think I just like the therapeutic like process, like they were saying before, just like going over something and layering it and keep going. Cause I just did, but all my paintings are really like sketchy and flowy. And I got into, I got super into pen and ink too. So like a ballpoint pen, which is a ton of layering and just slow shading. And stuff like that I find is really relaxing. And I think whatever I do now is my artist process, just something has to be like layered and slowly done. I just really enjoy the process. For sure. Um, I kind of do all of, all of my work around uh, the idea of painting, even when it's not a painting, uh, oh. photography, or if no matter what medium I'm using, I like to center it around like the kind of framed, like hung, image um so i uh i like to when i'm 
making, I like to view these different mediums as just other paints that I could use. <laughs> for me, I feel I'm a painter as well, but I feel for me, printmaking is so personal because it's such a meditative process for me. Yeah. It requires a lot of, we have to be really into in the pre present moment. And also the tools that I use, you know, these are very sharp tools and I just feel powerful, you know, I'm in control. And for me, that's very special. Veronica, what about you? Have you been working with, with washi paper, watercolors, pens? Or is this new? For me, um, art is uh, such a wonderful medium to uh, express your yourself, you know, and and it's it's to me, it's you're creating something. You're not destroying it. Yeah. You see, when you go through something like that, what we're going through, we are destroyed. But art gives you the purpose to create that you are not destroyed. You can you can go on and create something beautiful mm. out of you know whatever that was ugly before. So for that for me, uh, art is always an inspiration, a, a healing process for me. You know, I'm always creating. So I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not hurt anymore. You know, I. I can, I, I can, I can grow. I can make things. Mm -hmm. I can um, create instead of, uh, you know, in the past. And all that just consumed me. Now I can just, you know, uh, put it on art. Yeah, and that directly relates to the power, the control, the choice of tools, the choice of right. medium. All of that is is part of that healing. Where you're like, I get to choose this. I get to be intentional about this. Truly, Chase, in the comments, so amazingly put. That was just excellent. Um, but yeah, and just how that resonates through all of these pieces that are in the gallery currently and how that is, I mean, Veronica, you mentioned the joy that comes through. And it's like, you are able to see through the messages that are created and, and conveyed through these pieces. Uh, there are the layers of, of hurt and pain, but also healing and joy and, and power and moving through um, and finding uh, and finding kind of this ability through art and via art um, to to express the things that you choose to express um, and how how absolutely right. special you're, that is. You're almost telling, you, you know, that person that you can't destroy me. Yeah, what I've done, you know, incredible. Yeah, truly that I mean, this is perfect. This leads me to, to my next thought about process. Um, and this is just as an artist myself, I'm always interested in time spent, we mentioned the labor of art earlier. And so I, um, in the in the vein of, of being an artist, and talking to you all and how we are all compelled to make art very much to take power control to move through um, this life and, and express ourselves. Um, sometimes it flows out of us really quickly. Sometimes it's a full labor, like we mentioned. I'd love to just know how, um, and we touched on this earlier with some of the uh, some of the mediums, but how your process looks with these works and, and how long do they take? Or do you, Anisha, you mentioned working on a piece since 2017, like when just you, feel that it is I'm a I'm a firm believer in that like when art is presented that doesn't mean it's finished um it's just when it's being shown to other people um and that's just part of its process as well but um talk to me about uh, about the process of working on these pieces or a piece um do you work on them simultaneously kind of what let us into your process a little bit um, yeah, I'm constantly working on everything simultaneously. I have so cool. much work that um, the piece from uh, that's I've been working on since 2017. It's uh, it was traced from my body, so I consider it kind of like this, like living alongside of me. Um, that I kind of uh, I kind of like imagine different traumas and like repair it over time, and I use that I use a really therapeutic process for most of my art making the other piece angel in a red room um I also was kind of imagining uh like a traumatic event and returning to that space and offering uh 
some kind of like some uh, the salt, which was like meant as like protection for like that previous experience and kind of pretending to like use this time travel to like uh, heal past uh, traumas or personal and historical traumas. So I'm very, that's always what I'm kind of like thinking of uh, through making a lot of my work is just like how how does this piece, how does this piece look? What is like the narrative and how can I change that narrative? Mm. Still along the lines of power, of control, of regaining, of reclaiming that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Anyone you know, else? for me, the collages, I mean, I worked on them for years, years early. Wow. And they were, you know, some of them were in exhibits, some of them were not. And then, um, you know, like Anisha said, you know, it's just kind of coming back or uh, continues. Mm. Right? To go with the woodcuts and line of cuts, these are more recent pieces. Um, and um, I mean, I like to work, I can work on just one piece. I need to work in, in you know, simultaneously. I, you know, <laughs> I need to put them away and just go back the next day or maybe a week and see what, what comes, you know, what's speaking to me, right? And mm -hmm. that's how I work, yeah. So it's very chaotic in a way. <laughs> Isabella, Veronica, anything on process, anything on how, talk to me, Isabella, the duration of these three pieces, very similar in, in, uh, in image I, and thought. Ooh, go Veronica. When I, when I, when I'm inspired to do something, mm -hmm. I dive into it and then I don't lift my head up at all. <laughs> my family have to pull me out of it you know, and say, <laughs> where's my lunch? <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, I have to walk away. But, uh, but after a while, I feel very drained too, you know, sure. working of peace because sometimes memories come back when I work on something that is, uh, you know, pretty dark or, and uh, I have to walk away. I have mm. to take a breather. You know, I might come back a week later when I feel better, or maybe even two weeks, three weeks. And then I, I have this, you know, thing inside of me that I feel I want to come back to do it. And uh, some other pieces like, um, here comes the sun, you know, I think about the future and everything. And I, I just keep going, you know, I don't walk away. I just, I feel good about it. So that's how the process, sometimes my art goes. Sure, very compelled to do it. I love this, this need though, to, to balance that, of course, with taking care of yourself, to borrow your title, Anisha. Yeah, I think my process is kind of similar to Veronica's here, because I'm one of those people, I think, I got the idea for these pieces. Actually, I just had like, my, I was studying a figure a lot, and I was trying mm. to figure out like which what worked so I just kind of made my roommate like model around and I snapped a bunch of photos and she did that <laughs> one and I was like that's what we're doing <laughs> and then um I pretty much did all of them and like all of them at once so I was up for maybe like two or three days and yeah like when I was yeah after like my my third day of being awake I was like maybe I should uh go to bed but yeah I was I felt really exhausted and I needed to sleep for like a a couple of days the whole weekend was like a drag I was like I just yeah I didn't feel good till like the next Monday I think which is like fine I guess but then it was a really nice satisfaction of having them all done I felt really good about it they were so pretty and just the pose is so like striking and beautiful and I was like this yeah I did feel super compelled to do it and I wanted them to be like super perfect and exactly the same so I figured the only way to do that was to do them all at once um <laughs> So you had all three at, up at one time, painting all three at the same time, or one right after the other? Um, right, right after another. I drew, I drew them each, drew one, drew the next one, drew the next one, just to make sure all the proportions were the same. Mm -hmm. Then I painted one, then the next one, then the next one, and then the next thing you know, it was the, it was the, it was, it was Friday. <laughs> I was, was like, wow. Was so, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm one of those people. I just kind of drink Red Bull and coffee. I don't think I, I don't actually eat that much. So that's, that's pretty much what I do. Wild, so good. Um, cool, there's a question. Here I go, I'm asking it. Um, it says, I know all of you are returning to Awakenings for this exhibit. What has it been like for you to come back to Awakenings and how is this different from the first time? Great question. Here, I'll go ahead and answer. I think honestly, like I was like writing my artist statement and doing everything for like this upcoming show. And I just felt so much happier 
and so mm. much lighter and just so much I think just can we capture and create like so much freer because I think when I first exhibited it was like the I think it was a photography like a co- like series about just like me trying to figure out what was going on and why it felt so weird and like just me trying to figure out what to do next mm. but now I think after I had like time to really process that really honestly the show really helped me like process it and like I think actually deal with it so since then I've been doing so much better and it was great to come and like actually reflect and see and make something that reflected how I feel now versus how I felt then. I love that. Um, for me, I think it was really great to see um, how my and all the other artists um, processes have changed or like what has, um, how we've grown. It's so hard to see growth in your art practice when it, it's so gradual and you're so used to your own work. So it's really cool to see these things right next to each other. Yeah, very cool. Kind of like a capsule in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I do agree too, you know, how we have grown and, you know, for me is the healing, right? The healing, you know, what, what I was going through when I was creating those, those collages mm-hmm. and where I am now, you know, I'm definitely feeling uh, just lighter and I feel, you know, coming back to awakenings is a sacred space where I can be able to, to tell my story through my pieces, right? And mm-hmm. uh, um, in case I will be uh, loved, you know, by this community. So I'm very grateful. Yes, it is such I, um, a sacred space. I agree are. with uh, Alex too. Um, I I think when I first exhibited the first time with with uh, Awakening, I was really great to come down personally to meet all of you and uh, to see what you were you know what you were representing. And um, mm-hmm. I was actually very moved by uh, the work that you've been doing. And uh, and so when you call me back the second time, I I'm truly honored. And uh, it's uh, and I have to tell you this this I never talked about this thing, you know. I just do it in my art. Nobody ever asked me what mm-hmm. it represents, you know, things like that. And uh, awakening has given me this chance to speak about it, and so that to me it's really great because uh, I don't really want to talk about it, but uh, at the same time I want to, you know, that kind of feeling. Yeah, so uh, in uh, the awakening is, it it just gave me this uh, opportunity to, uh, to kind of feel safe to talk about it with, because there are others with me at the same time, that I'm not just all alone, you know? Yeah, so like there are other artists like Isabel, Alex, and everyone, you know, we we are in this together. Yeah, the solidarity of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And just the space itself, truly sacred and, and so special and so, um, so respected in, in what you, what's up on the walls, the space that it holds for the people that come visit when we were coming to visit. Um, just the fact that it is uh, truly just such a, a special place. Um, and I know I can speak for awakenings um, in saying that uh, they are, just so honored to be able to to kind of fold you all into to what they do and the space that they hold um, and and how how special it is because of all of you. Um, oh, I got another question. Amazing. Okay, this is specifically for Isabella. Um. When you have the trance of three days of pure creating, how would you describe the feeling of that state? Um, Do you find it vital to the process? When there's a a question for Veronica, I'll start with you, Isabella, those two questions. Um, I don't think it's super vital, but I've just noticed it's something that I just do because I'm, Mm. I I don't know, I'm pretty, I don't, I would kind of have insomnia anyway, so I'm usually always up. And honestly, I do like just to get the whole thing out of the way, like I do it in certain pieces, but if I'm actually like, you know, making and trying to like perfect it, like three giant things at once, I do try to just usually push through it. That's how I do murals too. Like I'm a mural person. And I think the last one I did, I was hanging out doing painting a billboard for like 13 hours. Then I went home. (laughs) So I don't know if it's vital, but I guess it is something I just always do, which probably isn't good for me, but 
I'm working on it. It's just how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, cool. The second part is for Veronica. You said that when you're creating these pieces that the memories come back and that you need to, to take space from the art. When you do return, um, do, is there any kind of feeling attributed with taking a break? Um, like, do you feel ever that you have to force yourself to go back and work on that piece? Some pieces, uh, do bring back memories, mm -hmm. but, um, there are no memories that can hurt me anymore, but I do think about it, you know, mm. and, um, sure. I don't want to think about it, but, uh, but it's good, you know, because that's where I don't push it away and then, uh, and then let it explode in, uh, in some situation, you know, I, I get to talk about it in my art and, and come back to awakening. You got it. You're taking the space for yourself and then you're coming back. Is there any feeling attributed with like coming? Do you ever have to force yourself to come back to a piece of work? Oh yeah. Um, I have to feel it. Then mm -hmm. I come back. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like uh, when I step away, if I don't feel like coming back, I just don't want to come back. Sure. And uh, sometimes it takes a process for me to uh, get through, you know, uh, before I, I, f I have this feeling of wanting to come back again. I don't know. Maybe it's because I, I feel, uh, I feel like I don't want to remember something, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't explain it. It's just something inside of me that, that tells me to go back again and finish yeah. it up. It's yeah. just the right time. Yeah. The right time. Yeah, good. It's just, uh, not, it's, uh, it's just kind of explain it. It's just, it's just something inside of you that you, you feel it's, it's fine, you know? Let's yeah. finish this up. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you're compelled to start a piece of work. So if you do step away from it, you're compelled to keep going with it. You're compelled to finish it. Ooh, okay. This is a great, this is a COVID specific question. Um, uh, has the isolation of COVID affected your artistic processes positively, negatively? Um, how's your art in the time of COVID? I think um, at the very beginning, I was uh, very quarantined. I got COVID very early, so I was working oh. nonstop because I had nothing else to do and I couldn't sure. leave. And I had to, even after I wasn't sick, I had to keep quarantining. So I was like really expanding to different mediums. I was starting to learn how to like sew clothes and like I was working on paintings. And yeah. um, I think that was really nice. It reminded me of being in school and being able to like have this studio time. And yeah. uh, uh, lately it's been a little, I've been back at work. It's been a little uh, more back to a normal schedule, but um, I'm definitely still working uh just kind of when when i'm off when i have time <laughs> mm -hmm. i am such an introvert so this quarantine thing in my studio. doesn't really affect me a lot because i'm so <laughs> introvert you know i just like being by myself and same. looking at my art so <laughs> it didn't bother me at all good for you veronica <laughs> <laughs> What were you saying, Alex? Yeah, I was working from home already um, in my studio, but so I was super happy. I'm like, yeah, I don't have to go to this place. I can just be at home and be, you know, focus on my work. And but then, you know, after a while, you know, I miss my friends. You know, I miss, yeah. you know, that that connection, that you know, in person connection. Even though we had, you know, we have Zoom and we have these type of medias to to connect, but. Um, but yeah, it kind of goes up and down, you know, like right now I'm, I'm happy to be at home again, but again, you know, coming the, in the summer, I wish I could be out and, you know, visit uh, galleries and studios and, you know, it might not happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we miss it for sure. Isabella, any, any COVID related processes? Yeah, I think honestly, I've been doing all right with just being at home. I think it kind of actually made me sit down and I, I, I don't know. It's not procrastination. I don't know. Sometimes I just have this fear of like starting something. So sure. now I just actually have to start stuff because I have nothing else to do. There's nowhere <laughs> to go, no one to see. So yeah. I still kind of, you know, walk around my house and pretend I'm doing everything, but it does, it has kind of made me work a lot more and just kind of explore what I want to do and 
Yeah, because I kind of refocused on my art during quarantine. I've been making way more positive, bright, shiny things. So I think I've been doing all right. I think it probably was a good thing. Not a good thing, you know, but making me sit down in one spot was probably a good thing. Yeah, it does. It gives us the time to be intentional about things. And maybe, I mean, I would hope, Alex, to your point of like, of course, we miss we miss our pals. We miss going to the gallery. We miss so many things. It'll make us that much more intentional when we're healthy and safe to do that, when we are engaging with other people, when we are just like, we miss each other so much that all we have to do is be kind to each other. <laughs> like That's all we want to do. Um, so, so hopefully that definitely kind of stays with us. I want to say thank you again so much, Isabella, Alex, Veronica, Anesha. Thank you so much um, for just this conversation, for everything that you've shared, for your art, first and foremost, but also just who you are um, as individuals, the joy that just comes off of you through Zoom. So honestly, we love to see it. Um, thank you so much. We're getting a lot of thanks in the, uh, in the comments. So we love, we love, yes, all of their beautiful words, um, their perspectives. It truly is a beautiful exhibit. Thank you so much. Um, I'm passing it back to you, Jerry, and you're taking it from here. Thank you, Taylor, Isabella, Alex, Anisha, Veronica. Your artwork is so beautiful in the gallery. And I actually feel like I might create something for the first time since COVID started. So thank you for sharing your process and for taking us taking us through a lovely evening. So thank you to the five of you. Um, a few quick thanks, and then we're going to close out for the night, which is thank you to Abby and Liv and Lily and Raina and Laura, who are all behind the scenes tonight, making sure this actually happens in our little Zoom boxes. Um, so thank you to them. And um, thank you specifically to our art committee, to our associate board and our board of directors. We absolutely wouldn't get to tonight without all of your support and long-term help. Um, I also wanna thank all of our audience members for joining tonight. Thank you for hopping on Zoom. I hope if you're in Chicago, you have dug out the snow or have decided just to put a blanket over it and wait for it to melt in the spring. Um, so finally, you'll get an automated email from us in a couple of days to get feedback. We'd love to know like what more you wanna see, how things could go differently. Um, we certainly would love to start thinking about going back in person and right now it's in the thinking stage, but we're hopeful. Let's continue to put that hopeful energy out there and hopefully we can hug each other in the gallery soon because I certainly miss um, seeing you all and I would love to cradle take care of yourself sometime and see everyone cradle that piece and everyone's artwork. So. Um, Finally, I know we are in like really hard times, but uh, Awakenings keeps all of our programming free so it is ex as accessible as possible. If you do have a few bucks or many bucks to send to us, we would absolutely appreciate it. You can donate to us by going to our website. Finally, please follow us on social media. You'll see more of these fabulous artists on there and also find links to kind of their own art pages where they're doing fabulous things elsewhere as well. And that's it. Thank you, Alex, Isabella, Taylor, Anisha, Veronica, and audience for being here. Have a lovely evening, everybody, and create some art. Good night. Thank you. Bye.